How long did I walk? Wait, isn't this the roads that they usually walk to school in Enemy's Hour? Or is this a different picture? Because, like, this kind of wall here kind of reminds me of it. If it is the same one, then I'm just like, what were you thinking, man? You can't, you can't just reuse the Enemy's Hour, you know. Like, fair enough for some indoor kind of areas that are kind of, like, vague. Unless it's, like, very distinct. Because otherwise, it's just like, hey, you're just recycling that. Just like, you're breaking the immersion by doing that. You're gonna have a different image if it's outside of Enemy's Hour. Still no car. Just as I couldn't help but think that maybe the world perished, leaving only me behind, a car showed up. I sensed the car coming up behind me, so I turned around. I saw their headlights approaching me. I thought for a moment, could I stand in the middle of the street to stop the car? It was so dark, I didn't think the car would notice if I just waved at it. If I were to stand in the middle of the street, I could get run over. Or it could turn into Silent Hill. <laughs> just like... Just like, oh, Takano. Well, she, she wasn't Takano yet, so Mio Tananashi was the one who caused the events of the first Silent Hill game. And I thought the car was getting closer and glow. Closer? What? That was a typo. Closer. And I made the phone call, I panicked and didn't know what to say. So with this car, I'd have to think very carefully. Yeah, you, you have all this time to think. It makes no sense. If I couldn't think of anything, then I should just let the car go. I mean, that's how, you know, novels work, you know? There'd be, like, a lot of inner monologue and thinking and shit. And it's like, realistically, you wouldn't have that much time to think of that before whatever you're, like, thinking about, you know, passes you by because you've been thinking about it and, like, time's kind of frozen in the form of a novel when they go through all these thoughts. But it doesn't happen like that in real life. She was really thinking this, you know, like this, the car would have passed by now. The next sports being there in my mind, it was incredible surprise when the car slammed the brakes with a screech and came to a stop. And of course, you know, it's it's more descriptive. It's not like she's thinking exactly shit like with those sports, because no, that's not what she's actually thinking. That's just that's just dialogue. Well not dialogue, but you know, that's just text adding descriptive, you know? Maybe I wasn't all there after that miraculous experience of lightning striking near me. I had half lost my mind in those dark woods, so I probably wasn't thinking very straight. Because the car had stopped after recognizing me, in other words. The driver knew who I was. And the only person in the area who would recognize me were... Suddenly a chill ran from my whole body. I started to dash away. I heard a voice calling after me. I no longer had the strength to run. My feet were trembling and I couldn't make them cooperate. I realized then that I shouldn't have sat down in the telephone booth. That was why I couldn't keep running. I was suddenly grabbed from behind, the car of my clothes almost choking me. I had fabric being ripped. I fell in a puddle and a staff member got on top of me. This time his finger wasn't in my mouth. All I could do was struggle. As I did so, I remembered all the scary stories Rico and the others told me. All the tortures the child, uh, the child? Oh yeah, there was just the one that was caught. Tortures the child that was caught had to endure. The ground left punishment, the squished caterpillar punishment, and the splayed piggy punishment. The names of those eerie sounding punishments came to my mind. I screamed and struggled with all my might, but it was too late. I was shoved into the back seat of the car. Why couldn't they just let me go? Simple. They didn't want me talking about them to anybody. The staff were yelling and screaming while chasing me, but once we were in the car, they went silent. It's like the Grim Reaper had come to get me. Whether I liked it or not, I had to come to terms with the fact that my luck had run out. But, but, I had called Takano Sensei, so I knew he would come to get me. I didn't know when that would be, but I knew it would happen someday. So I wanted to live. I would be saved if I lived. I couldn't even imagine the kind of punishment that was waiting for me. Even so, I said to myself, I have to live. I'd already found a light at the end of the tunnel. All I had to do was endure until I reached it. The car stopped. We had arrived at the front gate of the orphanage. Two staff members grabbed my shoulders so I wouldn't run. My shoulders were very skinny so it hurt a lot. I was scared. Scared of what I would have to go through. 
went through the door and I was finally sheltered from the rain. In a way, it wasn't sheltered at all, though. It was the middle of the night and long past time to turn all the lights off. Often it should have been quiet. But I heard a noise. It was a strange noise. The noise of a shower. The noise of metal objects crashing into each other. Lots of the staff yelling and screaming. A chill went down my spine. What could I possibly write down to fully describe this fear? The staff member knocked on the door of the storage room and the door opened. The moment it did, an angry roar issued from inside. Sight leapt into my eyes. I couldn't completely take in the bizarre scene before me. Two staff members were hitting the map with bamboo swords while yelling violently. It was a mat used in, you know, one you use when you do gymnastics. But why was it rolled up like that? The rolled up mat was tied with a string and was standing up in the corner. Staff members kept hitting it. Usually words are said to a person, but why they were yelling at a rolled up mat, the way they were hitting and yelling at it, it was as if they'd gone mad. Oh god, but wait, I could see something sticking out from the top of the rolled up mat. It was... let me see... whose shoes were those? All of a sudden I froze and couldn't think anymore. One man stood in front of me. The man's pinky finger was wrapped in bandages. My eyes moved upwards from his pinky finger and met with his. The beast's eyes met mine, peering with intent to devour me. I squeezed out a voiceless scream. My voice didn't come out, so it was more like a goldfish opening and closing its mouth. The beast struck his little finger in front of me and roared. I couldn't tell if it was a word or a meaningless shriek, but I was certain it was something abusive. I was scared. I didn't want to die. I wanted to live. I knew that Dr. Darkner would show up to save me. That was why I had to live and submit myself to the fear. I I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> the hand with the bandages grabbed my hair and dragged me along. All I could do was apologize and beg for forgiveness while hoping the beast had even a tiny bit of mercy in him. I doubt that. It was like a broken apologizing doll. A mad doll that kept muttering apologies until its key wound down. It was their toy shedding tears, coughing blood and apologizing in place of clicking gears. I could see into the shower room while he dragged me along. Though it was open and I heard wailing from the inside. What I saw was very strange. There was a locker on its side in the shower, one odd sight. Locker was taking a shower sideways. I never even imagined anything like it before. You know, when they left, you know, the punishments are just like to your imagination. Now it's like, okay, we're seeing how, how this shit plays out. And it's not pleasant. Locker was taking a cold shower while two staff members hit it with bamboo swords. I explained the metallic noise I heard before. So this means at least two of the other ones were caught. So there was a Riku and the two other girls. Did they all get caught? At least didn't want me to see that. He pulled my hair's v hair violently and twisted my neck so that I looked in the opposite direction. Then I realized he didn't do that to stop me from watching that shower. He did it to make me look at something else. I saw a window in a courtyard. Used to it was too dark to see anything. But the lights were on and the courtyard was very bright. Then I saw it. Inside of the hen house. I saw... Ooh! What is that? What is that? Why is, why is it censored? Is it censored in Japanese too? Yeah. What the fuck is it? What is that indeed? That and that and that? That hair was a Rico's. What? What? And why was she? That was fuck. Oh god, don't tell me. Oh no. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't want to die anymore. So they were all coarse. Oh my god, this is worse than I could have possibly imagined. I know Dr. Hunter is coming to save me. I know he's coming. I was staying to the staff bathroom. It stunk of ammonia. 
I saw and which what does, just doesn't fit in the bathroom. Why was this in the bathroom? I thought. Was not planned to be with. Oh no! Is it actually what I think it is? Please tell me it's not that. Please tell me they're not, you know, raping. No. This is too far. Well, it'd be too far away, but fucking hell. No way. No, 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 Actually, this is your punishment for breaking the rules, okay? Everyone must follow the rules. Don't you get punished, you understand? Sorry, I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. I'll never do everything you tell me to do. What's up with you? Please spare me. Please spare me from... Oh, that hurts. No, no. That was that. Jesus Christ. I mean, is it that? Or is it another channel's achievement unlocked? I mean, there's not even any music. Jesus Christ, that's fucked up. I mean, is it that? Or is it like something like some real cruel punishment that's just so fucked up that they have to be like, you know what, we can't even put this into words because it's a bit too much. I mean, did they beat them within an inch of their life, well, multiple inches of their life, or was there, you know, that, or was it both? I don't, I, 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 I don't even want to think about this, can we move on? Jesus Christ. I don't know, you think about it, it's like, you know, oh yeah, that's bad, that's real bad, but, you know, oh, it's so just fictional, but yet you hear about real orphanages where shit like this actually fucking happens, and hell, there's probably orphanages in the world where this shit still happens, that's fucked up beyond fucked up. How long have I been crying? I don't even know how long I've been comforted like this. I mean, let's like think about it. The end of Minigroshi, I mean, I'm going back to that a lot, but it's like when you find out, it's just like, talk and roll, and then they give you this backstory, and you're like, well, how can you not help but feel bad for her now? Wait, and then we just jump from that to this, it's like, what the fuck happens? My grandfather's hand is on my cheek to comfort me. I'm holding his hand lovingly and pressing my cheek against it. Are you okay? My grandfather put his other hand on my head. The warmth of his palms gradually calmed me down. Parts of documents were all around me. It was a mistake to sort through data while lying on a fluffy carpet. I must have fallen asleep and then had a terrible dream. When you sleep facing down, the pressure on your chest makes it easier to have nightmares. It's getting quite late. Why don't you go to sleep, Miyoko? I'm fine. I took a nap, so I'm not sleepy anymore. I'm almost done. So I'm gonna finish up, okay? You have school tomorrow. You should go to sleep. Otherwise, you'll get scolded for yawning again. I've been going to bed late recently. Because of that, I yawn a lot at school. My teacher must have written a note to my grandfather. It's ridiculous! It's ridiculous, the pacing! It's ridiculous! It's like, remember how this, how this started? It's like... Actually, I can't even remember how it started. Did it, did it start with... No, it didn't start. What? what? I can't even remember how this arc started. It started with talking a backstory, but I can't remember at what point in it, because it's been so all over the place. In one moment, it's like talking knows how to celebration party for her success with you know form the research team then it goes back to the orphanage which was you know prior to that 
she'd like literally jumped into a car at the end of the previous uh, not the previous but because we just went through that but the one time before that where it was at the orphanage when she was escaping just like she left and then in the car and then she wakes up and then it's just like goes okay it's like it's time major then we flash back a bit further to where she's like getting all organized and we flash back to the orphanage where she's still running away and it's like then we jump a little forward to where she's okay and it's like fucking get it together plot this pacing is ridiculous it's like whiplash I'm fine, I'll go to sleep as soon as I'm done. So please let me finish, okay? Besides, you shouldn't mind me. Go back to your study and continue with your article. The way for him to present his findings is approaching. He's been working so hard, devoting himself to his research, but there's unfortunately a limit to what an individual can do. He needs a collaborator in order to go further with his research. As to explain that his investigation could be the way, I mean, the key to solving the mysteries of human behavior and make people understand uh, just how important this work is. But his research is about a very complicated subject, so he couldn't seek assistance from just anyone. Someone who will be able to help him one day. Believe in that, my grandfather earnestly continued his research. I want to help him more. But all I can do is sort through his letter and tidy up his materials. I also assist around the house so he can concentrate more on his research. He always tells me how helpful I am, but that isn't close for me. enough for me. I still hurt, uh, study hard, get into a good college. I will study hard, get into a good college, and learn many things, so I can actually be of assistance with research. I'm a mediocre student right now, and I don't particularly like school, but I will do it. I want to help my grandfather. If his heart were to fail and he couldn't continue his research, I wouldn't hesitate to cut open back chest and offer my heart up for him. If he needs his lungs, I'll give him my lungs. If any of his organs fail, I'll give him mine. There's nothing strange about those feelings. They're perfectly normal ones. But if he had found me even a day later, I might not have been alive. I mean, with that in mind, that kind of implies that uh, the three friends that tried to escape were probably end up dying. Because uh, I don't think they're just going to get miraculously adopted, so that's some extra tragedy that they get brutally tortured eventually get killed or even if I lived it would either be without my body intact I mean think about that their plan was run off in different directions so they'll have like a chance of at least some of them escaping none of them succeeded they all got caught that's just tragic with my mind lost to me you know, even if I lived, it would uh, be without my body intact or with my mind lost. In other words, I'm alive because my grandfather came to save me. If he hadn't rushed to find me, I wouldn't be here. So I wouldn't hesitate to give up my life for him. I mean, I can see why she's so dedicated to him, because he literally saved her life. Moreover, I'd be more than happy to do that. Even though I want to be with him forever, human lives aren't immortal. Just like how my parents died, it happens so suddenly without any warning. I will never heal from my parents' deaths, but now that I have my grandfather, I'm not sad. But after his ex existence is an eternal healer, he may disappear all of a sudden for any unexpected reason, just like my parents, so I wish to be a part of him. That way, no matter what happens, we will be together forever. I don't want to be alone ever again. I want to be with my grandfather forever. I want to help him forever. Okay, then be uh, sure to go to sleep after you finish this, okay? Promise. Yep, I promise. We pick a promise after that. We smiled at each other and my grandfather went back to his study. I wonder if she told him about the shit that happened at the orphanage or not? The dried up tears are making my cheeks itch. I head to the bathroom to wash my face and brush my teeth. I looked at my face in the mirror. None of my grandfather's features are recognizable on my face. Of course they aren't. They're not related. He must have a family too, but I've never heard about them. He doesn't seem to want to talk about the sub that subject, so I didn't even ask him about it. Don't care if he has real grandchildren or not. Even if I'm not related to him, I'm granddaughter of Ifumi Takano. I'm not just a granddaughter either. I want to be more than that. 
I don't want a parent and child relationship, nor a lover's relationship, nothing like that. I want something more absolute that binds our souls. Something that not even a tragedy can destroy. I am Miyoko Takano, Fumi Takano's granddaughter. Maybe it should be Mio instead. That's what my grandfather sometimes calls me. Well, it's, you know, short. It shortens the name. It's like a kind of nickname, I suppose. I guess that's why she went by Mio now instead. I want to succeed in Fumi's spirit. Since his name counts from one to three, I want to share that three and be the fourth in his line. Oh, it, uh, I, yeah. Now it really, now her name actually has significant meaning, because that is what it is. It's three, four. Clever, I didn't think they'd actually incorporate that to be, you know, kind of imp somewhat important, I guess, because it's her name change. But it's not really much of a name change, she just drops off one character and the cast for me and yo become three and four instead of what they originally were. Today my name changes. I wrote that new name in the mirror. Mio Takano. What a wonderful name for the new me. And now it seems we're uh, back in uh, uh, I can't even tell who the fuck is talking because <laughs> like this could be jumping like further backwards oh wait no th I think this is uh, a grandfather so it's not jump too far ahead Colonel sir good to see you again Oh, no, Kuhn, come on, no more Colonel stuff, no, no. I was worried when I heard you were ill. You sure look great now. <laughs> My grandfather has told me he doesn't have any friends. He used to tell me everyone died in the war. That's not true. He has one very close friend. I guess that's the friend who has invested in, you know, taking care of uh, Takano after, you know. Ah, uh, if Fumi Takano passed. This is him, he's an elderly man, my grandfather calls Colonel Koizumi. Yeah, that's the guy. I don't know exactly where they met, but every time they get together, all they talk about is the military and the war. So I guess that's where they met. Look at you, Mio-chan, how tall are you now? We just had a physical checkup the other day, and I think I've grown two centimeters. That's wonderful. Good girl. Make sure you eat well, play a lot, and grow big and healthy. I envy you, Dr. Kuhn, for having such a cute granddaughter. Mr. Koizumi knows that my grandfather and I aren't related, but he always calls me his granddaughter. That makes me very happy, so I poured a little more black tea in his cup. After I finished serving tea, I left with a bow. I won't stay and listen to them talk, but I guess my grandfather doesn't want me to hear stories of the war, so he always makes me leave. I left before I was told to, but having to leave doesn't mean I need to go to a different room. I just headed to the other corner of the huge living room instead. Although I'm not right by them, I can still sit on a sofa and listen to their conversation. And if they need something, I can come help them right away. I try to earn points that way to prove I'm useful. I sat on a sofa away from them and started reading an encyclopedia. While doing that, I tried to listen to their conversation. That's great, the professor said they want to come over on Sunday, the week after next. Really, thank you very much, Koizumi-san. I wouldn't mention it, this just means the report you wrote there was that interest in Dark Nakoon. It showed a lot of interest. They even said it's possible that its research could receive the Nobel Prize. A Nobel Prize? <laughs> that sounds wonderful. My grandfather laughs. Since he laughed so cheerfully, something great must have happened. Mr. Koizumi must have showed the society the essay my grandfather was about to announce and gorged their reactions. And supposedly they find it extremely interesting. That means they recognize the value of my grandfather's research. That makes me happy too. But we know how this ends because, you know, the order of the freaking plot is so weird. 
that we already know that Koizumi doesn't, you know, end up, you know, telling Takano while he was still alive that his research and how they were actually, you know, interested. So we know that it's not going to go too well and Takano's research is just not really going to get recognized as a result. But what worries me is that you'll get infected with the syndrome yourself. Make sure you don't end up chewing out your own throat, okay? Clawing, I mean, you can't chew out your own throat, that'd be fucking weird. They're like, well, I take out my false chief rind and I just clamp him down. <laughs> well, maybe I'm already infected, but Himizawa syndrome is harmless if you live a normal life. It was a dangerous disease back when the villagers believed it always sure summer and bound themselves with strict rules. But those have faded over time. And now people rarely show symptoms unless something major happens. You know what I've just realized? It was... This, it started, this arc, started with Tarkano talking to her adoptive grandfather. Now I think about it, that's how the arc started and then it went into the orphanage. It's just the pacing has been really odd. After that many cases... A patient's emotional state has a lot to do with how the symptoms develops. As long as you live a normal life, there's nothing to worry about. So when one is under a lot of pressure, like during the war, the disease gets worse. That's right, well, there's nothing to worry about. Subjective sin symptom of the initial stage is the paranoia akin to that in depression. Once you notice it happening, you can teach yourself to react emotionally and physically by using my breathing method and you should also get at least 9 hours of sleep at night over a one week period. That's how you prevent it from worsening. The act of all the enemies our soldiers under my direction, not even one died mysteriously. I was gonna say something, what was it? I mean, that's, that's kind of the trigger really, isn't it? For those who don't, that have the enemies our syndrome, if they get stressed out, that's when it shoots up and, you know, if it goes up high enough, they will claw out their own throats. But of course, that's not even the worst of it because, you know, their paranoia could make them lash out at others without hitting that, you know, the very point at the end where they go that mad that they claw out their own throats. So, it's like, it's a very, 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 very terrible thing. As he talks, Grand Fallen started demonstrating the Takano breathing method and a bizarre exercise technique. According to him, this technique relaxes the body and lets blood and lymphatic fluid flow smoothly. As a result, you relax emotionally too. But the movements involved in the technique are so weird. I have to look away because my grandfather looks so silly. That was the one thing about his research that I felt bad about. Oh, grandfather asked me to do this exercise too. I don't want to make him sad, so I do it when instructed. I'm glad to hear that. Hideo Naguchi died in the middle of his research, so please be careful, okay? However, Naguchi Sensei's great work is still acknowledged even after his death. As a researcher, I'm sure that was his long-term goal. Manfell tells me about Hideo Naguchi often. He was born as the son of a poor farmer, but he studied hard and became a doctor. However, he was mistreated because of his background, so he left Japan moved to the United States. There he made many accomplishments as a researcher. He developed a vaccine for yellow fever. And for his vac background is somewhat similar to his. So he often said that of all researchers, he admired him the most. Hideo Noguchi died in North Africa. I discovered the vaccine for yellow fever. He heard it wasn't effective on yellow fever in North Africa. He went there to research it, came down with disease and died. I mean... You gotta respect, you know, someone, the, the balls of researchers like that, that put themselves in the line of fire of these potentially hazardous things to try to, you know, come up with a solution to, you know, fix, you know, like the vaccine kind of thing, you know, come up with a way to, you know, resolve it, you know. A researcher losing his life for his research. Sometimes that is a test of a researcher's courage. In that sense, Grandfather is very brave to visit enemies himself to gather information. 
himself says he may already be infected. Although my grandfather estimates from ancient texts that the enemy's hour syndrome was only a menace centuries ago. And now it's no different from the usual bacteria that share a symbiosis with humans. Many people got ill with the disease during the war, but that was because they were in an extremely abnormal situation. In today's peaceful environment, it's almost impossible for a person to develop symptoms. And there's a, you know, another thing. Spanish flu. That was during World War One, And, you know, similar situation there. You know, not in, like people are crawling out of their own throats. But, you know, it was a deadly pandemic. And, you know, it wasn't just deadly on its own. It was made worse by the fact that, you know, the conditions of World War One. You know, just made it worse than it already was. He sounds very optimistic, but he never brought me uh, with him to enemy's house, so maybe he isn't as optimistic as all that. However, since I live with him, there is a possibility that I'm already infected as well. But I'm not worried at all. That's because my grandfather has taught me that uh, as long as I maintain myself physically and emotionally, I won't develop any symptoms. I know all about the horrible terminal symptoms of enemies now, but I'm not overly fearful of them. You know, it kind of makes you wonder a bit, because, you know, the triggers that can set it off, and it kind of makes you wonder if, like, maybe this is how, like, maybe that's, like, how it all ends up happening. It's just like, what the hell are you talking about? It's just like, I don't know, because, like, I've been talking about this, like, assuming that anyone watching this has already seen Minigaroshi and kind of gets an idea of what happens. But at the same time, I'm like, oh, but I don't want to go into too much detail in case, you know, if it hasn't for whatever reason, which would be a bit odd because this answer arc pretty much spoils shit like that quite casually as it goes along, you know. Grandfather is enjoying his conversation with Mr. Koizumi. That's understandable. Mr. Koizumi told him some people showed great interest in his report. They even want to come over on Sunday, the week after next, to meet and talk to him directly. With the rapid advance of modern medicine, unexplored frontiers are steadily dwindling. What's a possible enemy bizarre syndrome my grandfather's government might be a new uh, continent in the field. He'll be decided in two weeks. It sounds like there will be more than one person coming. It also sounds like they're all important people in this society. They're all rich and famous, yet they aren't satisfied with just that. They all want to be involved with something that's worth an international award. It's a chance to gain assistance and sponsorship at the same time. I'll see you in two weeks. I'll make sure to be here. Good luck. Thank you very much. I owe you everything. <laughs> it's too early to say that. Let's wait until you find some sponsors. When that time comes, let's have a toast with that treasured wine of yours. Shame that didn't end up going to plan. It's like, you know, spoilers! It's like, yeah, spoilers if this is if you've stumbled onto this part and not the previous few parts where it was pretty much revealed that, you know, Koizumi couldn't, you know, end up, like, making Takano's dream, you know, more, become a reality while he was still alive because there were still people alive that knew about it that were like, no, 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 no. That was the last of their conversation. My grandfather kept his head bowed until Mr. Koizumi was gone. It sounded like he set up this great chance for my grandfather. So I bowed my head just like him. Did you hear that? Finally there's a chance for me. There are people who are interested in my reports. I know I heard. Now you'll have people to fund you and people to help you with your research. Well, that's not set in stone yet. <laughs> Although he didn't want to admit it, he had a good feeling about it. The research he had conducted all alone was finally about to gain recognition. Sunday the week after next. Wait, no. Oh, wait, no, that's... that's... I can't even say Tarkner, I gotta call her by her first name because it'll just be confusing. So that's obviously Mio's line. Sunday the week after next. Right, I'll be busy. The first impression depends on my presentation. I have to rearrange my data. No, I probably should practice explaining things in front of people. Anyway, I have to make sure I don't forget everything. anything. 
Well, it'll be a lot of work to rearrange your data. Your handwriting is bad, so maybe you should write bigger. Hmm. Anyway, I'll be busy. The next two weeks will go by fast. You're right, I'll help you too. All the uh, Fobel and ours have to be dusted. Also, we'll need to straighten the curve on our rolled up documents. I think leaving them laid out under the rug overnight would fix it. Hmm, we have plenty of things to do. Bill, could you help me? Of course. I'll skip school for it. Oh, you can't skip miss school. We'll have to go to the first office into the year and motivate you to ourselves to work hard towards the week after next. Since that day, my grandfather spent more time in his study. It's not easy to create a report that you are going to show other people. Copying machines hadn't been invented back then, so everything had to be handwritten. He knows it's somewhere, but he just can't remember where he put the data he needs. As for me, I have to make sure I have enough guest comps to serve tea, so I'm counting them. Do I have enough tea leaves? Maybe I should get someone to go with tea. Perhaps tea. <laughs> My grandfather knows nothing about these things. There's a whole list of chores to do. Just like go the British way, you know? We got tea. How about some biscuits? <laughs> and then you'd be like, oh, dipping in this oil tastes wonderful. But then you're like, oh, but now the tea's got all these bits of biscuits in it. It's ruined. I need to clean the windows so the room will be bright. What else? Two weeks pass quickly. We am I, we busy ourselves getting things done. It went by in a blink of, uh, of, uh, of text, I suppose. What a wonderful two weeks it is. I can finally feel that I'm actually doing something to help my grandfather with his research. Hope the day of the meeting will be a memorable one for my grandfather. Hope that day will be a beautiful and clear one.